Hmm. We'll go ahead and call this uh, meeting, regular meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. Um, I'd like to recognize everyone who's in attendance tonight and also those that are viewing the uh, broadcast on G10. I'd like to note that uh, Mayor Pro Tem Lazar uh, wasn't able to be with us tonight due to an accident that occurred on his workplace today. and. We send him our best as far as a speedy recovery from the injuries that he sustained. So hopefully he won't be in too much uh, pain from, I guess it was a leg injury. Here. Okay. Um, we'll begin the meeting tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Jerry Bittner, followed by the invocation by our City Attorney, Mr. John Carter. Please rise. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this day and for all the blessings you so graciously bestow upon us individually and as the city of Jacksonville. We especially give thanks tonight for those who will be taking the oath of office for our Jacksonville Youth Council. We pray that the leadership roles that they will be taking will assist them in fulfilling their life's journey and perfect them in the good work that you have already begun in them. We pray for our men and women who are serving us here and around the world. We pray for their safety and for their anxious families. And as always, we pray for our mayor and for our council that your guidance and direction would be with them. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, Council, you have before you a copy of the, uh, uh, of the agenda and the consent items along with uh, add-on item, and uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to adopt at this time. Move to adopt the agenda with the addition of the appointments to the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. And, and we, we need to... We want to add a, uh, take the closed session off also for tonight. And the removal of the closed session. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Here, none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have the approval of the minutes. We have August 7, 2013 special workshop meeting and August 7, 2013 regular meeting. Mayor Phillips, I move to... Um, have the minutes approved for our August 7th special workshop meeting and our August 7th regular meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The next item for tonight, we have a presentation, and this will be uh, uh, administering the oath of office to some of our youth council officers. Tonight, we're going to administer the oaths of office for the new officers of the Jacksonville Youth Council. These officers will join incumbent officers who were elected last winter and took their oaths of office in January. The Youth Council was formed as a result of youth asking for a voice. The gov they govern themselves and are available to provide uh, connection with, uh, from the City Council here in Jacksonville to the youth community. These youth are here to serve and to learn. To each of the new uh, youth council officers, and as a reminder to the incumbent officers, we as the elected officials of the city of Jacksonville welcome your input and suggestions. All right, tonight I have uh, Eric Gutierrez, who will be the secretary. You're from Jacksonville High School, and your mother is Sharon McDonald, right? Correct? Yes, okay. Uh, Cheyenne Woods will be the executive committee member. She's from Southwest High School. And Kay Woods, Ms. Kay Woods, uh, her mother will be uh, holding the Bible for her. And I have Mackenzie Worthington, who is an executive committee member from Northside High School. And her father, Kevin Worthington, will be holding the Bible for her tonight. So if you will... Repeat after me, and when I say state your name, state your name. And put your hand on the Bible, raise your hand. And then when I say state your office, state what your office is, okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll begin by saying, I state your name. I do solemnly swear that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith and, that and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office, the of my office as, state your office, as <laughs> state side, north side, no, no, somebody said, okay, secretary, okay. It's confusing to me too. Of the Jacksonville Youth Council, the Council. and maintain and uphold, and maintain and uphold. All, the laws and regulations all the laws and regulations of the city of Jacksonville. So help me God. Thank you very much and congratulations on uh, filling these offices. <laughs> Again, as I said before, uh, I, I really, uh, I have really become uh, very, very much uh, appreciative of the efforts our youth are giving to our community in the form of serving on this youth council. Uh, I think it's commendable of you to take the time out of, I'm sure your very busy schedules to, to do this. It just shows that you care about your community uh, as much as anybody and I appreciate your service very much. Carmela, did you have anything you wanted to say? No, I'm extremely proud of you guys. Congratulations. Sure. Thank you folks. Thank you. They want a picture? Oh, they want a picture? All right, Council, that brings us to item one in your agenda packet. This is a voluntary annexation petition for Lowe's Foods. It's a 37.35 acre tract at the corner of Gum Branch Extension and Western Boulevard. 
think suffering is happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at this time, uh, we are required to have a public hearing in this matter, but uh, Mr. Ron Massey, our assistant, or deputy city manager, will be presenting this item. Mr. Massey. Mayor and Council, this voluntary annexation position, uh, petition was received from C4 Development uh, on behalf of John Ken Koenig Incorporated for a 37.35 acre tract that is contiguous to the current city uh, limit boundaries. The tract is located at the corner of Gum Branch Extension and Western Boulevard in the Williamsburg Plantation area. The proposed use of this property is to develop a shopping center anchored by a Lowe's food grocery store. The financial analysis shows a positive net cash flow of approximately $199,000 over the five-year review period. Staff recommends the council adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. Okay. Any questions of Mr. Massey, council? Thank you, Ron. This time I'll recess the regular city council meeting and open the public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to this issue? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and reconvene the regular council meeting. And, uh, council, you've been asked to approve or consider this annexation ordinance. Mayor, move that we adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Ms. Councilman Bittner uh, reminded me that I needed to let some of you folks go that wanted to go. I was, it, honestly, I was going to err on the side of letting you stay and suffer along with me, but uh, I'm going to take a quick, quick uh, breather. I know you've been working all day, Kevin, so I'm going to let you all go. Take care, Kevin. Thanks a lot. Thanks. And thanks, thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for serving on the Youth Council. Okay, this brings us to our first session of public comment for the evening. I have no one on the sign-up sheet. Is there anyone uh, that didn't have a chance to sign the sheet before it was taken up? Okay, so we'll move on to agenda item number seven, six, I'm sorry, number six under new business or non-consent items, I'm sorry. This is Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. Uh, this is a leadership development program appointment. Uh, currently, there are no uh, vacancies on the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. However, the city has a leadership development program which provides additional opportunities for citizens in a non-voting capacity. City advisory committees may have up to two leadership development members. So we've have, we have uh, a couple of considerations that have been requested. And at this time, I will ask uh, Council Member Jerome Willingham, who's the liaison uh, to the Community Development Advisory Committee. At what? To the Recreation and uh, Parks uh, Committee for any uh, other nominations or nominations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to nominate Mr. James Wheeler as a leadership development member with a term to expire August 20th, 2015. Okay. Councilor, is there any other nominations? Mayor Phillips, I'll make the motion to uh, close the nomination except by acclamation. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Here, none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Willingham. It brings us to agenda item number seven. And this is uh, Onslow Civic Affairs Appointments and Reappointments. Uh, it says two seats on the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee are open for appointment. It's, there's two uh, persons currently serving that desire to be reappointed, uh, and there are no talent bank applications on file in the clerk's office. Uh, at this time, uh, I will turn to Council Member Jerry Bittner, who is the uh, city appointee to the uh, Onslow Civic Affairs Committee. Uh, for any nominations. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to recommend the reappointment of Marsha Wright and Carol Hurst Long, both for, to 
two-year terms expiring September 30th, 2015. Thank you, Mr. Bittner. Are there any other nominations? Move that the nominations be closed and that the nominees be appointed by acclamation. Second. I have a second. Uh, any further discussion here and none? All in the favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That brings us to agenda item number eight, which is the add-on uh, for tonight's agenda. This is Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee appointments, and we have uh, one vacant position and two applicants that have expressed interest in serving on the committee. Council Member Angela Washington is the liaison to the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee, and at this time I'll ask you for any nominations that you might have. <laughs> Mayor Phillips, I nominate Mrs. Grace Holbrook for as a new member for an existing three-year term expiring on June 30th, 2014. Excuse me. I nominate Mrs. Grace Holbritton um, to be appointed as a new member to an existing three-year term expiring June 30th, 2014. That the uh, nomination be closed and that uh, she be accepted by acclamation. Second. No motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? And we're going to forego the second session of public comment tonight. I don't think anybody else has come in. So we'll go straight to the reports. And at this time, I will uh, start with Mr. Willingham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just wishing um, Mayor Pro Tem Michael Lazara a speedy recovery from his accident as well as Carmen Miracle, our city clerk's husband. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Willingham. Mr. Bittner? Just to report that the Civic Affairs Committee has met and is working toward the observance of Patriots Day and 9 11 observance. Thank you. Ms. Washington? Um, with the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee, just want to report that we are currently still taking application for businesses and residential appearance awards to be awarded in the month of September. So please, if you have any nominees, um, please contact City Hall as soon as possible. In addition, please remember that the committee continues to work to increase um, the city's participation in our adopter programs. So currently we have programs for parks, streets, and trails that can be adopted by a group or an individual. So if you're interested, please also call City Hall and be reminded that um, the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee has been working with the Sanitation Department. So we are still planning to have a citywide cleanup to be held the third week in September. So more information will be forthcoming regarding that particular date and what types of electronics and household goods that may be lingering in your house, how they will be disposed of that day. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Council Member Thomas. Uh, Mayor Phillips, I'd just like to make a comment on the item, one of the items in our consent agenda tonight. I think it's noteworthy on a couple of cases, to me personally anyway. Uh, Sanders Ford has notified the Department of Safety that they'd wish to donate a vehicle to the city. The vehicle is a 2013 XLT cargo van with 25 miles on it. It's going to be used by our school resource officers uh, as part of the curriculum for DARE and gang resistance education and training and be used by the division as a community relations tool. I guess one aspect of it that's kind of hits home to me is the fact that the new vehicle will replace the current DARE vehicle, a 2002 Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS that was donated by uh, my late first cousin, Michael Morton of Mo Morton Motors. And uh, I see it's going back to Morton Motors. I ought to talk to Barbara about getting it, but I don't think anybody in my family needs an SS, so <laughs> anyway, but that, that seems kind of special to me. Huh? Well, thanks and for it's very nice of Sanders Ford, obviously, to uh, uh, make that donation, which they'll get plenty of publicity over the years once it gets fixed up. Thank, thank you, you man. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Really, really appreciate you doing good that. Uh, Matt, Matt and his crew out there uh, are pretty good corporate citizens, yeah. and, and they do, do help the community quite a bit, and this is just, just another gesture on their part of the things, the do, good things that they do do in our community. Uh, Mr. Warden. No report except I'm proud to be here, sir. Happy to be here. And proud. happy to. Happy too. and proud. 
Okay. Uh, Dr. Woodruff. Uh, several items. First of all, it's hard to believe that summer is about to uh, end. We would remind the listening public and the viewing public that school is going to be back in session this coming week. We would encourage people to be very careful in the early mornings. We're going to have buses out when we've gotten used to the summer not having them. Also remind people to watch for the school zones and especially watch for young children as they're waiting for the buses. Second thing we'd like to mention is the, uh, with the end of August comes obviously Labor Day. So before council will meet again, we will have the Labor Day holiday, which is on a Monday. So that means that the garbage collection schedule for the week of September the 2nd will be skewed. If your garbage is usually picked up on Monday, it will now be picked up on Tuesday. Tuesday will be on Wednesday, Thursday will be on Thursday, Friday will be on Friday. So for the Labor Day week, please remember if you're on Monday or Tuesday, the garbage will be set back one day. Also, we would like to uh, mention to the council, previously you have authorized the, uh, the release of funds for the Museum of the Marines relative to their their work and the grant which the City Council has given. We do want to state that because of federal regulations, there is now a requirement that the Museum of the Marines must file a $10,000 check relative to the final processing of the paperwork relative to the physical building there of the, Monfer of the Museum of the Marines. We believe that that is eligible for we believe that that's an eligible expenditure under your stipulation that it must come for bricks and mortar because this is part of the permitting process. So we are informing you this evening that we will authorize, unless you feel otherwise, that the Museum of the Marines can use $10,000 to secure the final federal easement and $3,850 for the survey that must go with the easement. Now that does not increase the donation that the City Council has given. As you know, the City Council has given a million dollars towards that, and this is simply authorization for part of that. Does any council member feel that that violates the stipulation of brick and mortar only? I think it falls within what reasonable we, interpretation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, two other things that we'd like to mention. For years, the viewing public has enjoyed G10. Uh, it has become the uh, channel of choice. I know most people would rather watch the city council or the county commission than they would like to watch Family Feud. And maybe I shouldn't have picked that <laughs> as an analogy. <laughs> But the reality is that the cable system is changing. And we've been notified by Time Warner that there are going to be some changes to where you will view government TV in Onslow and Jacksonville. Many of us will continue, because of our particular television setup, to get it on G10. Others who may have a different television set up will find that it's now going to move to channel 19.7. Now, to be honest with you, I didn't know there was such a thing as a point in any of the channels. But with all of the digital compression or whatever they call it today, there's a lot of new things available in TV land. But coming in October, you will begin to see some changes to your system. I believe the actual notifications will go out in October the 8th. And again, we would encourage you to watch for those notifications because it will have further explanation in it as to whether you will now be viewing us on G10, as you always have, or whether you'll be viewing on channel 19.7. One thing that Glenn and the staff have begun to do is to determine from a marketing standpoint do we need to come up with a new marketing plan? Obviously, we will need to do something because some residents of the city will view it on channel 10, others will view it on channel 19.7. But we'll be reporting back to council on our marketing plans. The last thing that we would mention 
you know, the city is very proud of the fact that over the years, uh, the mayor and council have donated millions of dollars to help create the various memorials. You have donated, as I stated before, $1 million for the Museum of the Marines. You have also donated $1 million for the Veterans Memorial for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. It's unfortunate that in the process of doing certain capital improvements that a debate has come up relative to where we should locate the trail. As you know, millions of dollars have gone into the development of the Rails to Trails program. About 75% of that trail is now installed. The final portion basically goes from, let's just say, City Hall out past the memorials and then out to the new base gate generally where, where Bell Fork Road comes in. We appreciate people's concerns regarding any impact that may have on the Vietnam Memorial. I just want to assure the public that while we do have some who are concerned, that the city staff and the city council have likewise been concerned. We would not place that crossing of the Memorial Garden in a place that would jeopardize the $2 million investment that you as the elected officials have made in that memorial. And we hope that all parties can understand that at the end of the day, we believe that the memorial gardens are cherished by us all and that the Rails to Trails program is essential as part of our enjoyment of our relationship with the military and with the Memorial Gardens. Thank you very much, and as always, I commend you and thank you for your dedication and leadership for this city. Thank you, Dr. Witter. Mr. Carter? No report, Mayor. Thank you. Right. Uh, with that, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, second. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.